daughter of mine, hear me out. I was born in Tehran, Iran, and although I hated, hated school, I knew that for as long as I stayed in school, I would be safe from harm's way. Somehow, I knew that school was the answer to my future. But by the time I was 15 years old, I was at the risk of having to drop out. My grades were very poor. And I was forced to do the one thing, the one thing that was unforgivable in my family. And that was to lie. See, I was desperate to leave Iran. I wanted the same opportunity as my two older brothers who left before me to come to the United States and continue their education. So I lied to my parents about my academic grades and forced them to send me away. You see, my grandmother Zulekha, my mother's my father's mother was married off at the age of 12. 12. She was so young that she fell asleep at her own wedding party. And she had to be picked up, carried away, and tucked into bed as the party continued without her. She gave birth to my father at the age of 15. She had no education and had to learn how to dial on a rotary telephone so as not to be totally isolated when they left the Jewish ghetto. And yet she was a strong woman and found her independence in her own way. She cared a lot about education and she worked really hard to help strangers in the community. My mother's mother, Grandmother Hishmat, was also married off at the age of 12. She gave birth to her first child, a son, at the age of 13. 13! Daughter, you haven't seen this photograph. Here she is with seven out of her eight children, with six out of her seven children. And she's only 30 years old. She looks like she could be 65. By the time she was 35 years old, she was pregnant with her eighth child. I cannot even imagine the desperation she must have felt. A desperation that caused her to do something that was unforgivable. Very difficult at the time. She died of an infection caused by a back alley abortion at the age of 35. Then there was my own sister. My sister, only eight years older than me. She was engaged at the age of 14 and married when she was 16. Here she is, just days before her engagement party. Her beautiful long hair cut off and teased to make her look older. No, 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 do not tell me that's how it was done. Don't tell me it was the culture of the country. Don't tell me it was the norm. Don't tell me that everybody did it and we didn't know any better. Do not tell me that. I came to this country when I was 15. I finished high school. I was the first girl in my extended family to get my bachelor's degree and the second to get my master's. I know 
I was fortunate to be afforded this opportunity. But it's not the case for many women out there around the world. There are so many who do not have a bright future and not afforded the opportunity for a career, for education. It wasn't any different in my husband's family. There was Sarah, beautiful, kind, sweet Sarah. She must have been somewhere around 10 or 12. She was sitting on the floor in her mother's kitchen playing with her doll. Her mother picked her up, took her by the hand, took her out a distance away to another house, gave her a peck on the cheek, and told her, from now on, this will be your home. From now on, you will cook and clean and do as the man told, tells you. And her mother left. So she did as her mother told her. She wasn't sure what was happening. She was confused. But when a few days went by and her mother didn't come back for her, she took matters into her own hand. She ran out the door towards the general direction of her house. And when she found her home, she was ecstatic. She was so happy. She hugged her mother. She loved her mother dearly. She was so desperately attached to her mother. Her mother, on the other hand, was very upset. She reprimanded her terribly, took her back to the other house, and told her she better not do that again. She needs to stay there and be with the man they called her husband. She was so confused. Was she being punished for something she had done? Something horrible? She thought she was a good little girl. So began Sarah's life saga. Miscarriage after miscarriage. You see, her little body could not handle bearing life. Eventually, she had three beautiful little daughters, one of, one of whom passed away at the age of nine or ten from an illness. She was an amazing, giving woman. She was full of love. She raised her daughters. She raised her grandkids. She helped raise her grand, great-grandchildren and was working on raising her great-great-great-grandkids when she passed away by the age of 96. But for all of those years, for all of her life, she felt guilty for not having more kids. Worst of all, for not having any sons to carry the family name, to take over the family inheritance. She was shamed. But she was a beautiful person and my hero. So I ask you this question. How is it that today, there have been, in the last 50 years, more women and girls murdered around the world than all of the men in all of the wars and conflicts in all of 20th century. How is that possible? My first answer was to become an artist. I screamed, I yelled, I cried, when I didn't even know why I was crying, why I was screaming. I poured myself into my art. I expressed myself with my self-portraits, with my drawings. And I expressed myself sewing my soft sculptures that I called dolls. 
Tell me something. Did you know that Denver, along with New York City, is a hub for human trafficking? Denver? I don't get it. It is time for us to stand up. It is time to say no more. Four years ago, I founded a nonprofit arts organization called Redline. At Redline, red doesn't mean stop or danger. Redline is where everybody is welcome to express themselves and is encouraged to color outside the line and think outside the box. Currently, there is an exhibition called Off the Beaten Path, Violence, Women and Art that addresses this issue, addresses the issue of gender-based violence. I encourage you to come and learn and become aware about this issue, this devastating, devastating issue. I ask you, to stand up and join your voices with mine and yell and shout, no more, no more, we're not going to stand for this. No more gender-based violence, no more stereotyping, no more having girls and women killed only because of their gender. Stand up and demand that half of the population of the world, be counted, be educated, be respected. More than anything else, go home, the most important place on this planet. Go home and talk to your children. Don't take it for granted that they already know. Don't assume that they already know. Talk to them about self-respect and teach them not to be affected by all the advertising, fashion, and what is thrown to them from the media and enter entertainment industry. Teach them to respect themselves, that they are beautiful, and perfect as they are. Go home and teach your sons equality and respect for all, and your daughters self-worth. I hope to see you this summer at Redline. Thank you.